what's up guys how are you BIE folks out there doing because you know they're listening <laughs> hi agents welcome back to Nicole's view now Mike Pence when I look at Mike Pence he is the certified he is the white supremacist he is white supremacy like when I look at him he looks like a white supremacist. It's one thing to call someone a white supremacist and they are, you know, who they are, racism, devils. But I'm talking about the look. When I look at Mike Pence, I see a devil. I truly see a devil. I see a devil with horns. I see just, he just looks demonic to me. He looks soulless. You know what I'm saying, guys? He looks like he could kill someone and then have that same smile on his face just a demon just a devil um but anyway so he decided to pull this stupid ass stunt going to a cults game going there to simply honor his white supremacist rag gets out there puts his hand over his heart as if he's a nazi and turns around and leaves okay and this is why these devils are despised and hated this is why because they have nothing else better to do not only that but to waste taxpayers money doing this bull and then having his um his boss okay his silly ass white supremacist boss, I'm sure he told him told him to go do it. Okay. I, I'm more than positive he told him to go do it. I mean, pathetic. They get off on our agony. They get off on our pain. They get off on not validating the struggle of black people. They don't care. This is mental torture that they're doing. They know that these protests were not about no damn flag. It wasn't about a damn anthem. It was about the injustice against black bodies out here. That's what it was about. About race soldiers getting off every single day and not a damn thing being done about it. But they back these same folks, okay? They're giving them the marching orders to do this or else these folks would be put away in jail and see these are the same demons these demon seeds come from their ancestors the same ancestors who back in the day let's let's start bringing up the red summer of 1919 when black soldiers would come back from world war one only to be lynched by angry demon white mobs you know, when they want to talk about an anthem, oh, you want to talk about the military? Bring that up. See how fast they change the conversation. It'll change real quick. Or they'll go, oh, that was so long ago. Look at you. You hang it on to the past. Da, 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 da. They'll give you that same spiel. This is what they did to black men coming back from World War I. This is what they were doing. But they want you to stand up to a flag and bow down to their white supremacist nature. Let's not forget that. So when they want to be so quick to talk about that, bring that up. I wish more who are outspoken, like Shannon Sharp, for example, I wish she'd bring this up. See how fast they change the subject, as usual, because that's their thing, diversion, deflect, hijack, and make it about something else. But you keep putting it at them. Oh, you want to talk about the military? You want to talk about history? Well, let's talk about 1919, the summer of 1919. Talk about that. All the killings they did, especially black military men who were so excited to come back home thinking maybe finally our people can be respected when the opposite happened. The complete opposite. See how fast their tune changes. See how fast they want you to shut up. 
So Pence can stick it up his, you know what? Nobody gives a damn beside your rabid white supremacist fan base and go away. They don't like it when the spotlight is on them. They don't like it when they are being called out for being devils. Just imagine the horror. Just imagine coming back home. You're helping fight for these devils and they turn around, you come home? Really? This is what we have to do. We have to throw it back in their faces. Although we always say we have to stay on the topic because that's what they like to do. But if they want to divert and go towards the military, I say, okay, let's talk about the military. Let's talk about how you did our ancestors. Let's talk about it. They're not going to do it. They're not. They're going to go right back and talk about something else. But anyway, I, I just had to say that. Because Pence and Trump are both pieces of shit. That's all they are playing to their crowd. Anyway, I've added a short clip about the soldiers, the black soldiers back in the day from coming back home from World War I in this. And let's always honor those black men who were killed for serving a country that hated their guts. Good enough to go get killed, but not good enough to be treated like a human being. Let's honor those, our ancestors, those brothers. We will never forget you. Anyway, let me know what you think, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. The World War had created a new impetus and a new confidence in those writer Alan Locke called the New Negro. Thousands of blacks had migrated north to help build the instruments of war, and thousands of blacks had gone to Europe to fight in it. By the war's end, some 200,000 African Americans would serve their country in Europe in a segregated army. One all-black regiment, the 369th, would fight side by side with French soldiers as equals. In the end, the 369th spent more time fighting on the front lines than any other American unit. The men of the 369th earned an unprecedented number of French military honors, 171 Croix de Guerre, France's highest military medal. African-American soldiers hoped that their patriotic service would earn them recognition, acceptance, and equality in American society upon their return. African-American veterans uh, returning to their towns uh, south of the Mason-Dixon line found themselves set upon and spat upon and uh, indeed uh, brutally accosted. I saw the black soldier fighting for democracy to make the world free. And these people came back expecting the blessings of liberty and full uh, deserts of, of freedom coming back and being denied it. There was a whole upsurge of, uh, of reaction that said, if you think anything has changed because of this war, you've got uh, a second and third thought coming. But the outspoken black leader, W.E.B. Du Bois, is urging the returning veterans to fight in a new battle. Make way for democracy. We saved it in France, and by the great Jehovah, we will save it in the United States or know the reasons why. This country of ours, despite all its better souls have done and dreamed, is yet a shameful land. It gloats in lynching, disfranchisement, caste, brutality, and insults. By the gods of heaven, we are cowards and jackasses if we do not now marshal every ounce of our brain and brawn to fight a sterner, more unbending battle against the forces of hell in our own land. We return. We return from fighting. 
we return fighting. W.E.B. Du Bois. On Sunday, July 27th, 1919, Eugene Williams, a 16-year-old black youth, crossed the invisible color line on a Chicago lakefront beach. Trying to swim away from attacking whites, he drowned, igniting racial fires. Roving bands of whites beat and killed unsuspecting blacks. Blacks fought back. At the riot's end, 15 whites and 23 blacks were dead. Jim Crow, said the Chicago Tribune, had come north. The Chicago riot had become part of the racial frenzy. Racial clashes, massacres, even lynchings in Florida, Georgia, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Arkansas. Beautiful. I can't believe exactly what I'm hearing. We went to war in World War II to fight for the freedom of speech. We didn't fight for a freedom of speech of hatred. Many of our members, I'm the National Commander of Jewish War Veterans, and over 50,000 of our men died They're fighting for your right to speech here now. I don't understand why you come out with such hatred. Phil, excuse me, Phil. Yes. Mr. Muhammad, sir. You, you make me sick to my stomach with that. Because well, at the same time also. that you were fighting, you were not no, fighting for the freedom and independence of black people. Soldiers, black soldiers in segregated companies lost their lives on foreign soil there, but would have to come back and fight just to get a bite to eat and not have to go to the toilet on the side of the road somewhere in the bushes. So you're nothing but hypocrites, and you won't pull that small-time stuff over on me. Yeah.